it is my pleasure to introduce Professor Zhixiang Gao here to our ISL colloquium. Professor Gao received his PhD degree in electrical engineering from the University of Notre Dame in 1990 and has taught in the Cleveland State University ever since. <laughs> Professor Gao has um, had, had, had uh, intensive collaborations with engineers in NASA and industry and has helped, helped them solve a lot of uh, real world control problems. And uh, as one of the main developers of the new idea, but with a long history, uh, called active disturbance rejection, um, Professor Gao has matured this conceptual idea into a engineering, real engineering system and has made lots of achievements in industry control. Just to name a few, you can see that uh, the new idea, new technology has been commercialized in North America by a startup and financed in part by US venture partners and also has saved a, saved a Parker Hannifin plant over 50% of energy across the 10 extrusion lines. Also, it has achieved 200% to 400% performance achievements, improvements in a, uh, superconducting radio frequency cavities of modern linear particle accelerators at the National Superconducting Cyclotron Lab. And now it is hardware into the DSP chips by Texas Instruments using uh, under licensing agreement. So I'm pretty sure that uh, in today's talk, Professor Go is going to present us a fascinating history of this technology, and we will foresee together the promised future of this technology. Now let me give you Professor Go. Thank you, Jim Tao. <coughs> thank you, thank you, Bobby, <coughs> for uh, making this uh, uh, possible. It's, uh, it's my great, great pleasure to come here <coughs> and uh, uh, speak to you all. And, uh, <coughs> My uh, my talk today is about an idea. It's about an idea that's uh, uh, that's been around for for, for for many many years. And it's an idea that's reborn. It's a, a, an idea that almost died. And so it's, it's, it's more or less a, uh, a, a a a a story. And so my talk will start with uh, a uh, historical perspective of cybernetics. And uh, I'll concentrate on the great inventions uh, in the uh, uh, in the success one, and I'll uh, try to uh, uh, to uh, 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 to reveal the uh, the attempt for um, conceptualization of these great inventions, and, and that's what leads us naturally to uh, active disturbance rejection. And it's no longer just a concept; it's a concept that's been put in in practice. Uh, uh, I will talk about uh, uh, three particular uh, industrial practice in uh, extrusion, in motion control, and in uh, superconducting cavity control. And I will conclude my talk with some remarks. First, let's, uh, let's review three greatest dimensions, in my opinion, in digital control. Uh, we start with uh, uh, James Watt's uh, flight governor. 1780s, and this is the invention that uh, made the uh, industrial revolution possible, as we all know. And um, uh, uh, as we will see uh, uh, just a bit uh, later, there, there were many attempts on um, conceptualizing this uh, this invention. Yeah. And uh, the second invention, uh, second great uh, invention, is the PID, proportional integral erosion control, and this was the first. Uh, uh, put together by uh, Elmer Sperry in the attempt to uh, uh, automatically control uh, ships and airplanes. And uh, the first uh, con con uh, conceptualization was uh, uh, provided by uh, Norm Minowski about 10 years later. Yeah. And uh, uh, the third invention is Zero Black's uh, negative feedback amplifier. And, uh, uh, and that was in uh, uh, 1927. And we all know that uh, it took, uh, uh, took him 10 years uh, to get uh, patented, and to get uh, the invention approved by US uh, Patent Office, and we'll see, uh, we'll, we'll see why, why that's the case. Yeah. So uh, in terms of conservation, it started uh, with Clerk Maxwell in 1868. In 1868, he wrote the first paper in control uh, on, on governors. And, uh, he was a pioneer. He found that the uh, uh, control system or dynamic system can be understood through differential equations. And he pioneered that, uh, that approach. 
And um, um, uh, I mentioned the uh, Mi Minowski in 1922, and uh, he gave the uh, PID formulation and stability conditions. Uh, but the, the greatest uh, uh, work happened in the 1930s when Bode and Nyquist uh, conceptualized pyroblast uh, feedback amplifier in, uh, in invention. And that, uh, I think, was, the, uh, was what uh, finally get him over the hump in terms of getting the, uh, the, the invention uh, proved. Yeah. And then we uh, come to 1948 uh, with uh, uh, Norbert Wiener. He, uh, he wrote a book uh, uh, on cybernetics, and, and that's the, uh, uh, that provides the foundation or beginning of modern control theory. Right. So this is a, a, a brief, uh, very brief uh, uh, list of uh, uh, the, uh, the effort to, concept, to conceptualize the emotions. And this was the Nobel uh, uh, winner in, uh, in 1948, who uh, uh, came to this, uh, uh, this great understanding that control and communication or information theory are inseparable. And, and, and he, through the uh, uh, Second World War, uh, in, the, uh, in the effort uh, uh, of uh, uh, designing anti-aircraft uh, uh, artillery, and he found uh, the, uh, the universal concept of uh, negative feedback. And that's the bedrock of his uh, book on, on cybernetics. But in establishing cybernetics, he reached back to Maxwell, uh, like we just said, uh, 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 the 1868 paper, yeah. and uh, 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 and that was the uh, uh, he, he explained how he came uh, came up with this uh, name, uh, cybernetics. It's from uh, uh, the Greek uh, uh, word uh, steerman. So 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 from very beginning, you see uh, the the concept of control is very much. The, uh, the center of cybernetics. Okay. Uh, a uh, uh, well-known uh, uh, control historian, Otto Meyer, in 1971, uh, actually uh, wrote a paper on, on, uh, on Maxwell's uh, uh, paper, on Maxwell's uh, conceptualization. Okay. Uh, he pointed out that uh, uh, Maxwell is a great scientist. Uh, but his work didn't really make an impact on industrial control. And he gave a, a, a list of uh, uh, reasons. Okay. And uh, uh, so from the very beginning, you see there's a, 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 a gap between the conceptualization and the invention themselves. Okay. So we, we, so we come to, uh, to this uh, uh, realization that it's, it's, it's human nature that we, we invent, then, uh, and then we conceptualize. Okay. And uh, uh, we can see it uh, happen repeatedly in the history of, uh, of cybernetics. Uh, we compare the, uh, we compare the, uh, uh, the WASP uh, steam engine with Maxwell's paper, Sparrow's PID with Minosky's paper, Black's amplifier with Bode and Nyquist, and in the uh, Second World War, uh, anti-aircraft artillery where uh, the communication engineers and control engineers come together in the war effort, and that leads to uh, Wiener's conceptualization in 1948. And this is a pattern in history that we cannot ignore. Okay? Uh, but once the uh, 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 modern control uh, theory is established from 1960s to the present time, and we have we have seen this uh, this uh, 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 this divergence between theory and, and practice. And, and, and to this point, we haven't seen a, a, a much. Uh, uh, large-scale application of the uh, modern control theory in industry yet. We're, 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 we're looking at the PID uh, technology has, uh, has, which has dominated the industrial control for, for, for uh, close to 100 years. Uh, so this is a very curious fact. And, and the modern control theory itself uh, uh, is about more or less as a, a applied mathematics. Uh, and uh, uh, in mathematics, we have a renowned uh, Mathematician John Van Neumann, who, who warned us in 1948, uh, 47, this is the year before uh, Wiener's book, that uh, uh, you have to be aware that th there's a grave, grave danger in, the, in this uh, uh, kind of effort. That uh, when you are taking a, a, a theoretical science away from its empirical source, and uh, uh, you are not careful with uh, 
with how your uh, uh, how this branch of science uh, uh, develop they could they get away from uh, from the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the empirical uh, 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 beginning and he he warned us in uh, in this uh, uh, in this book or in, uh, in this paper he wrote. And then in, uh, in 1970, when uh, Otto Mayer wrote his uh, uh, book on history of control uh, called The Origin of Feedback Control, and he, this is the first sentence in the, in the book. He said that this, this, this field is essentially based on a single idea, a single idea, a single idea of feedback. Now, if the entire field is based on one single idea, right, uh, 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 is that uh, uh, something that to be uh, concerned with? Right? And, uh, uh, could we uh, 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 say that uh, we may uh, uh, we may uh, uh, be led to uh, pass on a theory which an idea for? Should they have more ideas? Right. And uh, uh, let's see how is feedback studied. Right. Pretty much follow the uh, uh, James uh, uh, follow Kirk Maxwell's uh, uh, lead that we model, we uh, we analyze, and we optimize. And, and, and we have accomplished quite a lot in that uh, paradigm, right? uh, from, from Maxwell paper all the way to the present uh, modern control theory. Right? But, but there are different voices, right? including uh, uh, Professor Vigil here. Uh, from 1971, uh, his first paper on adaptive, on adaptive inverse control to, nine, to 2008, his book on adaptive inverse control. Uh, he, he spent close to 40 years on this idea. This idea that uh, that's not a single idea of, uh, of control theory. Okay. And also, uh, I include the Professor uh, Yichi Ho from Harvard University. In 1982, he wrote a paper, he wrote an editorial in IEEE Transactions on Automatic Control. And he said, uh, is this uh, uh, just application of theory or is this uh, a discipline of, uh, uh, that can, can be uh, viewed as experimental science? And in, that, in tw uh, 2010, he, uh, he, 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 uh, he uh, 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 I think it's, uh, it's, it's around 2010, and uh, he, uh, 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 he raised the question, uh, uh, do we still have vitality in this field? Yeah. <coughs> and, uh, and that uh, uh, leads us to Professor Jing Jing Han. Uh, he wrote the first paper on, on active disturbance reduction control in uh, 1989. And his last paper in 2009. Uh, he spent uh, uh, 20 years, last 20 years in his uh, career, uh, focusing on this one uh, uh, one idea it's called active disturbance reduction control, which we'll uh, get into uh, in more details. But I first want to uh, uh, pay tribute to Professor Rigel and his work on, ad on adaptive inverse control. Now everyone was concentrating on feedback control. How do we design the uh, feedback controller to make it also follow the inverse? And uh, uh, he was one of the few scholars who uh, had this keen insight. If you, if you uh, rely everything on, on feedback that put a lot of pressure, put a lot of burden on, on feedback that require you, uh, for example, high, high bandwidth, uh, uh, high bandwidth uh, uh, controller that, that that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, could cause uh, stability uh, uh, problems and also could, could cause noise issues in the feedback system. So he provided, uh, he, he, he constructed a different idea. He said, well, why don't we use the plant model, if we have model, why don't we invert this model and, uh, and use the inverse as controller? Now, inverse uh, may not be precise. So, so let's use a, 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 a signal processing approach and uh, make, uh, uh, make the uh, parameter of controller adaptive. So you, you, you primarily, is, uh, you, 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 you have a feed forward control. But with feedback to uh, take care of the, uh, uh, the, the, the uncertainty. And this is the idea he worked on uh, for, for like uh, 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 close to 40 years. And, uh, and in, uh, in the attempt to find a simple, robust, and precise uh, 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 controller. Right? And, uh, uh, and this is uh, 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 true to uh, Norbert, uh, Norbert Winner's spirit <laughs> uh, right. in, in terms of, uh, uh, I'm honored to have uh, 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 the presence of uh, Professor Professor Eagle. I was just talking about your work. You were? <laughs> and and uh, uh, 
I think he, he was one of the scholar who who, uh, who 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 stayed true to the uh, uh, to the uh, conviction that uh, control and signal parsing, control information cannot be separated. <clears throat> and recently, uh, there's a, a kind of a reflection uh, on on, uh, on, on uh, by the control community. Uh, Carl, Carl, uh, uh, Professor Carl Ostrom gave a primary talk uh, at last year's ACC, where he, uh, uh, he, uh, he, he went through the history of control and he uh, 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 advised us that we should, uh, uh, we should not forget the foundation because the tower will tumble. Right. And, uh, and uh, he recognized that we are uh, at uh, a, uh, a critical point in the development of control theory. In this, uh, uh, in this uh, discipline, and uh, he uh, he strongly uh, uh, suggests that we go back to foundation to see uh, what's there to, to make sure that our foundation is uh, is, uh, is solid, and that uh, 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 pointed out to us what is our foundation? Do we have a solid foundation? Uh, <coughs> and this uh, brings us to uh, uh, to the uh, 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 ebook. That's uh, uh, published online by IEEE Control System Society, and uh, 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 in the book, and I'm not going to read uh, the, 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 the whole thing to you. Uh, we're talking about the reinventing itself. What we're, we're talking about justifies our investment, because at this juncture, it's hard for the control series to get funding. Uh, it's hard to justify because uh, the theory has been uh, under development for so many decades. Uh, why is this not uh, uh, the case where uh, uh, it's uh, uh, made a major impact uh, in the in, in engineering practice? Uh, what, is the, uh, what is the issue? The single PID is still dominant in the industry. Right? And, and, and we're still in this mode of uh, a model and uh, optimized. And uh, even though we have some uh, success in, uh, in applying, in some cases, the modern control theory, but by and large, this is the, uh, the uh, mentioned in the, in the book, that uh, obtaining a good model, obtaining a good model is a challenge, right? uh, among other things. Right. So uh, uh, with that, let's uh, 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 look at a, a brief history of some other ideas. Right? And, uh, uh, and that's a long history. Right? And uh, uh, we, uh, we're going to uh, uh, to look at the uh, south pointing ch chariot, this is uh, uh, a mentioned in the case of China, going back thousands of years. And we're going to look at uh, uh, the uh, consulate uh, as a famous governor, Soviet Union, uh, uh, in principle, active deservant a, a, a bunch of others. But there's underlying uh, conviction behind all of this that uh, the problem control is a problem of deservant. We, 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 we see that come out in, uh, in, uh, in each case. In South Pointing Chariot, uh, this goes back to the very beginning of Chinese culture. Uh, this uh, was attributed to, uh, to Emperor Huang Di, uh, although uh, there was no hidden, uh, uh, this is like a, a 2700 uh, BC, there was no written, uh, written record back then. <coughs> uh, the first written record uh, goes back to 200 CE, and, and, and this is in the uh, in era of three warring states. And uh, uh, the record is this: you, uh, you, you build a chariot, and you have a pointing finger on top of it. Right? And, and, and what you want to do is to, to make sure that this uh, pointing finger points in the same direction, doesn't matter how the chariot turns. So the army knows the direction or the, the direction home. And uh, they built it. They built it, uh, but there was a controversy in the history of uh, China that uh, people said, is this not just a, uh, a, a, a legend, or is this something real? So by the time of uh, 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 200 CE, there was a uh, debate in front of the uh, uh, one emperor. Uh, uh, and uh, so Ma Jin was uh, one of the uh, uh, people who said, uh, actually, there is, this is a this is true, it happened, there was something like this. And they said, uh, I'm going to show you by building it. <coughs> so 
So I actually need build one. Right? And the idea is quite simple. Uh, you want this uh, pointing figure to point to the same direction it started with. And uh, you have the, that's your reference direction. But how do you keep it there? Well, you uh, uh, devise a, a differential gear system where you detect the turning of the chariot. And then you uh, 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 rotate the pointing figure in the opposite direction. And, and that's negative, <coughs> and it works. And if you if you search uh, for uh, at YouTube, you'll find many people have made it work using Lego. So this, there's the uh, 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 detailed account of this in the book Science and Civilization in China by uh, Joseph uh, Nidhan. Uh, and that's led up to the second crucial figure, Jean Victor uh, Poncelet, uh, a Frenchman, French uh, uh, ma ma mathematician, and he wrote a book on projectile, uh, projectile ge geometry. Uh, he was uh, a soldier uh, uh, in prison in Moscow, and he wrote his book, best work in, in, in the prison. This is, this is a legend. Okay, but uh, in 1829, he wrote a book on industrial mechanics. And in that book, he drew a figure. He, he studied steam engine, uh, like many other people. But he was one to recognize it's the lag in the, uh, it's the lag in the, in the flywheel that make the uh, steam engine oscillate. So he was, he was one of few people who recognized the true nature of feedback control and what make it Right. And, and, and he was not just a pure scientist like Maxwell. He, he was an engineer. He said, let me show you how to fix it. <laughs> he said, uh, I, I'm going to connect uh, a, uh, uh, a layering device on the engine shaft where I detect the disturbance. And I'm going to use that information to uh, change the valve directly before the engine speed slows down or speed up. Right. And, and, and uh, the Russian scholar uh, attributed uh, the name Invariance Principle to Fonson right. Lev. And that's these to the uh, Russian scholar. About 100 years later, more than 100 years later, in 1939, and this Russian scholar wrote uh, a uh, PhD dissertation on the Invariance uh, Principle. Nobody understood it. And he didn't get his uh, PhD, but he got uh, an appointment as a professor, because he, he was so brilliant. And in 1939, he wrote a short, shortened, uh, uh, more uh, uh, easy uh, 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 to understand paper. This time, everybody understood. And this time, he got into trouble. Because the environment's principle uh, is perceived in conflict with the uh, Soviet uh, ideology. At that time, the ideology of, 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 of revolution, everything has to change in the revolution. Nothing, nothing stays the same. So, so he was a, a labor counter-revolution. You see, paper were, were, were burned. He was driven out of the, uh, the, uh, 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 the Soviet, Soviet Academy of Sciences. I visited uh, the, uh, the Moscow, the, the Soviet uh, 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 Academy of Sciences uh, in uh, 2010. And I still uh, 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 talk to a few uh, a student, uh, or key students. <coughs> so anyway, uh, uh, he, uh, he, he coined, uh, well, he, he gave the uh, name of principle uh, of, of, principle of, of the environment uh, to Ponsolet, to uh, but he didn't go, uh, go all the way because uh, of the uh, um, uh, circumstances. The person who went further was a uh, was, was uh, Boris Petrov. He was a rocket scientist. He put it to use. He, he coined the term new China control system, where uh, followed the lead of Ponce he measured the disturbance. And, and this is a, the second channel. This is a regular feedback channel. Second channel, he measured the disturbance and it out. And this was, uh, 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 this was very successful. And this, uh, uh, for, for uh, during the 50s and early uh, 60s, it was red hot in Soviet Union. Uh, but then they tied it down. 
then, then the model control theory uh, took over. But before it died down, uh, another uh, uh, key person came into contact with it, and that's Professor Jim Zuhan. And he thought that this came out. <coughs> and uh, uh, he was a student in Moscow in the 1960s. And uh, uh, he studied it. He studied with uh, punctuality. He was doing all translations, left and right. But he was uh, exposed to this idea. He didn't do anything with it. He came back to, uh, to Beijing in, uh, in the middle of the Cultural Revolution. He didn't have, have any chance to do anything with it until after the Cultural, Cultural Revolution. In 1990s, he started to, uh, uh, to, to come back to this idea. And, and that's where active disturbance rejection was conceived. And in his book, in his paper, he paid tribute to the Soviet scholars, to, uh, to, uh, to his roots. And he, uh, 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 he and, uh, and my father uh, worked in the same institute. And we came into contact in the 1990s. And uh, I took this idea to the US, to Cleveland State. And we worked on it for close to 20 years. And then we hand off to, uh, to David. Uh, to uh, U.S. venture partners to commercialize this idea, and so that's basically the uh, the the, uh, the nutshell of this story. And so from Moscow to Beijing to Cleveland. Uh, so so let's let's talk about uh, uh, what is active disturbance rejection. I start with the, uh, the, the conviction that the foundational problem of bottom-up control is disturbance, re rejection. It's not co-placement, it's not linearization, it's how well you reject disturbance. This is a, 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 a for Ponsolet. Uh, he was the first one to recognize the importance of disturbance rejection. And this was inherited by Shikano. This was inherited <coughs> by <coughs> Professor Jin Zhong Han. Yeah. And, uh, <coughs> Uh, the objective control is to hold your output in mind, despite of all these disturbance uncertainties. And disturbance here is in a more general sense, not just external disturbance, but also internal variation we call it dynamic uncertainties. Right. And the key, the key is uh, how do you extract the disturbance information? The information is there, it's hidden. This is where information and control come together. They stay on the same page. No but winner was right. They should never be separated. The control problem at, at the bottom, uh, the bottom line is information problem. Right? And, and uh, uh, how, how to get it out? Different problems. State estimation. Right, so we turn a modeling problem, we turn a problem of mathematics into a problem of signal processing. <clears throat> so about the disturbance information, what kind of information do we need? How do we fund it? After we fund it, how do we use it? These are the basic questions of active disturbance rejection control. There are plenty of seeds you can set. <laughs> now, I'm going to put it uh, in the, this is for uh, practicing engineer to, uh, to understand. Right? They start with PID. And uh, uh, the internal, uh, internal dynamics, external disturbances, just a, a single PID controller is uh, 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 inadequate to, to handle. So what we're saying is uh, we can give you some help. So the input and output uh, data so a state observer, we call it extended state observer, I'll tell you why. We can extract the disturbance information or the, the, the information about uncertainty uh, in real time. And uh, the, the controller now has uh, two signals to work with inside the one. And so so the, any improvement we, uh, we obtain is because we are using more information. Because our controller has more information than before. Right? And, and, and this is the part we call it active. It, uh, it is the disturbance and unknown dynamic that cause output to, 
to vary. Right? We're saying that if we can obtain that information before the output vary, then we're ahead. Right? So it's, it's, it's like a new case of Professor Visual's approach. Professor Visual's approach is uh, uh, on the controller side that if the output varies, we're going to make adjustment to the uh, controller parameters using uh, signal processing approach. Okay? We're doing it in a similar manner, but instead of working on the controller, we're saying, let's make a, a design controller for an ideal plan. And if the plan deviates from the ideal plan, then we make a correction based on this information. So we're forcing the plan to behave in a certain way, instead of making an adjustment in the controller to accommodate whatever changes in the plan. So, so, so the ideas are parallel. We all recognize the importance uh, of not relying on a single feedback alone. We all recognize this field may not be based on single ID. Right? But we go about doing this in a different way. Right? And this is how I explain this to, uh, uh, to a lot of uh, practicing uh, uh, engineers. Now if you look at it, uh, in industry, we have this, uh, imper uh, this, uh, this, uh, this empirical paradigm where it's, uh, uh, we, we, tune the, we design and tune controller in, uh, in, empirically. The controller reacts to the, the, to the output change, but it's practical. The PID controller is, uh, is used widely. It's still dominant. Right. And uh, then we, on the other uh, side, we have modern control paradigm, where uh, it's model-based, where it's rigorous, where the controller is optimized. Right. But here, you, you need a, 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 a transparency. You need a, a lot of information. Yeah. So, 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 so we could say that the uh, industry paradigm may be a, a more like a black box approach. And uh, 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 the modern control paradigm is more like, like a white box approach. We need something in the middle. But we know something, but we don't know everything. A lot of uncertainty in there, but we know there's a, there's a basic structure in the plant. Like in the motion plant, we know the uh, uh, Newton's law. We may not know the friction, we may, we may not know the load, but we know that uh, our input is, is, uh, is uh, proportional to the uh, acceleration. We're, we're, we're producing a motor torque, and that motor torque will change the acceleration. So that's, it. that's uh, what uh, 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 basically that we know. Everything else, we treat it as a signal. We, we, we use the signal processing approach to, uh, to see if we can extract this signal, and if we can extract it, then we can compensate for it before the output is, uh, is, uh, is uh, changed in a, significant, in a significant way. So here, we're dealing with this at the uh, acceleration level. Now if we, uh, this is a 180 degree ahead of position, ahead of the, uh, the, uh, the, the output. So that's why uh, we're, uh, we're more active. Let's use this uh, motion control example that's uh, uh, everywhere in industry, <coughs> in the own manufacturing plant. Uh, your, 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 uh, the acceleration, the function of all this, but this function may not be known. Uh, in the black box approach, you, 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 you do not care what it is. You use a control law called PID in this form, and you tune three parameters, you make it work. That's, that's how they deal with the, uh, the uncertainties in the industry, by and large. Uh, <clears throat> in the uh, uh, white box approach, uh, you model it. You find the mathematical expression of and you find the uh, mathematical expression of what you want. And you use control law to get rid of what you don't want and what you want. And that's the basis, uh, that's the, uh, the idea behind full placement feedback signalization in all that. So what do we do here? Well, we, we, we come in the middle. Uh, we're saying, hey, this is the plan we're dealing with. Uh, uh, we, this is the ideal plan with, 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 without all this. We did not control for this. Right? And if somehow we can uh, estimate this total disturbance, we can reduce the, uh, uh, the plan to this form, then our controller for this ideal form would work. Right? So that's the basic idea of active disturbance rejection. So if we can, if we can uh, uh, estimate F and we can, in real time and we compensate for it, we reduce the uh, messy nonlinear time variant uncertain plan to something that's more ideal. So the key here is the, uh, the estimation. 
So, so we reduce the problem of uncertainty to the problem of signal process, to the problem of information. <coughs> and uh, how do we estimate it? Well, start from this, we're using uh, the concept of state observer in motion control theory. So we're actually taking a part of motion control theory and apply it to it. Okay? But this is how we apply it. But this is a second order system. And if you turn it into a state space, uh, you, 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 you will have two states. But here we uh, define this unknown quantity to search state. And we extend state information. That's uh, where the extended state observed, uh, where, 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 where the ESO name come, comes from. Okay? So this is not, uh, the uh, extended state uh, 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 formulation. And we build a Lundberg observer, or we build a Nanina observer, whatever observer uh, uh, you, can, you can think of, you know, it, it's in this form. And if it's the observer works, the search state will converge to F, or at least get close to F. And that gives us the information. That's the key piece of information PID doesn't have before. And if we have this information, we can we can we can we can come back to this, uh, uh, put it here, and we can reduce the uh, the, the, the plot to an ideal form. Right? And this idea can be uh, extended to a, a, a MIMO nonlinear time varying plot, right? and, and this is a more general form. But I I'm, 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 I'm sure you can you can you can find it in, uh, in the papers, and uh, so I don't want to bore you. So the train of thought is this. We start with cascade in integral form, it's ideal form. We design a controller for it. Right? Then we treat uh, anything uh, uh, different from the ideal form, we treat as a, a disturbance, estimated control it off. Right? Does it work? Does it work? This video compares the performance the of PID to a novel active disturbance rejection control under conditions of eight-fold increase in system loading. Both control the position of a wheel after one revolution. The first example as tuned for the nominal load of four small weights, and a second example for a load eight times the nominal inertia. The controllers were not retuned for the increased load, and the active disturbance rejection control demonstrates its much wider tolerance to changes in systems dynamics. PID with the additional weight and uh, <coughs> same condition for EDRC. And this was done in 1997. <coughs> uh, <coughs> it took us quite a few years to simplify it so that it can be easily implemented in, 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 uh, in an industrial plant. And this was done in 2010 at the Parker Hamilton plant. It's an extrusion plant, and uh, uh, it has immediate impact of 58% uh, 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 on average uh, energy save. Right? And that's, that number is something uh, that people have a hard time to believe. <coughs> so let me, uh, let me explain this, uh, a little bit about this process. This is an extrusion process. You add the plastic uh, uh, raw material in, you hear that uh, anybody play tennis, the string come out of this this uh, this this uh, uh, this, 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 this uh, system, right? and uh, uh, it is crucial uh, in this uh, 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 in barrel to control the temperature. They're, they're, they're divided into several zones, and also in a die, there's, there's, there's several temperature zones, and uh, there are a lot of disturbances in this process. A lot of a uh, uh, lot of un uncertainties. You're controlling the temperature. You're controlling pressure. And uh, there's a lot of variables, through speed, temperature uh, of the material coming in, and uh, you are trying to control to keep output the product, uh, the product, characteristic constant. And uh, this, this problem, uh, this multi-zone temperature control in industry, there's no good solution. You know, uh, uh, I once met uh, a uh, engineer who spent six months modeling this. This is uh, R and D, right? but, but it's impossible to do it on factory. So, so every year they hire somebody to come in to tune the PID controller for them. Okay. And our approach here is uh, 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 
we're going to, uh, for five fingers alone, we're, we're going to treat it the five independent loops. And we'll use five, uh, five, uh, five ADRCs. And uh, we're going to treat the coupling among different domes as disturbance. And uh, this is the, uh, the, the PID uh, performance, where you see the fluctuation of the temperature going up and down. And you see uh, the heating and the cooling uh, uh, come in and out. And, and uh, this is just, people realize it's not perfect, but unless you, uh, you spend uh, six months and spend uh, uh, $500,000 to model it, there's no cheap solution. So they do what they can. And this factory is uh, supposed to be a world class factory. And we had, uh, a, uh, uh, we had only uh, a, a week to, uh, to, uh, to put in our uh, code. Right? But once we put it in, look at this. The temperature, uh, the temperature uh, uh, fluctuation, uh, the animation, <laughs> the temperature fluctuation become much smaller. Uh, all the fans are turned off, are turned off. Only three heaters remain uh, active. The two, two other heaters are turned off. Uh, so that's why you see such a, a such such a, a big uh, jump, big uh, a, a change in energy consumption. And, and this is the, uh, uh, the engineer uh, working uh, in the plant, uh, <coughs> telling us that, that, that only a week, and, uh, uh, and what happens afterwards. It, once, uh, once we uh, switch the, the controller to ADRC, they, they never went back. And there were no maintenance, it's still operating. And more information can be found at this uh, Ohio Polymer website. So that's the first example. Second example is ADRC in motion control. And, and this is again a third party industrial uh, verification. And uh, in motion control, we are looking for three things accuracy. And in accuracy, we, we see uh, 81% reduction in position error. In uh, energy saving, we see 41% re re uh, reduction. And in wear and tear, we see uh, 71%. Again, this is a data obtained by a third party. And it's this kind of data that got us uh, 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 in agreement with Texas, in, uh, Texas in, uh, Instrument. And uh, um, uh, uh, they signed the licensing agreement with, with Livestream with uh, the CSO signal to commercialize this, uh, this technology. The third example is in high energy physics. And this technology is making impact on science. On, on high energy physics, on, uh, on particle accelerators. And this is probably the largest or second largest in the country, uh, National uh, uh, Superconducting Cyclotron Lab at Michigan State. They, uh, they've been working on uh, the problem, the problem of uh, vibration, the problem of what they call the microphonics. For many years, uh, they reached uh, an impasse, they don't know what to do, uh, uh, short of uh, changing the uh, structure, and that costs uh, a lot of money. So the chief engineer uh, at the uh, uh, at the lab Google disturbance rejection and found us. Uh, very uh, accidental. And we went in and we uh, we installed the, uh, uh, the, control, the new control uh, uh, new control algorithm. And um, um, we, we installed it on uh, several uh, uh, superconducting cavities. I will not go into the details of this uh, high energy uh, physics uh, lab. And uh, uh, the disturbances in this uh, in superconducting uh, 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 cavity come from many sources. Uh, it's, it used to be the case where you study each one separately and you try to come, uh, come up with a solution. Uh, and all, and all, of them, all of them, through different uh, medium, will affect the uh, cavity. Uh, we we installed the, uh, uh, the we, we implemented the, uh, the, the ADRC in their um, IPGA and uh, in simulation this is interesting in simulation we only see two times improvement that's 200 percent but in hardware test we see 400 percent and it's been running since uh, uh, January uh, January 2000, uh, 2011 over two years now. And uh, uh, there's more curves. Uh, 
GID and, and, and in the US. Yeah. And recently, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're uh, operating their control, uh, control uh, system uh, on uh, beyond superconducting uh, capabilities. <coughs> And there's some uh, there, there are some e equations that I just did it here. Uh, if you're if you're in, in, interested, you, you can see how the problem of vibration gets formulated as disturbance for injection. It's not intuitive. It's, it's, uh, um, it, it takes uh, 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 a good understanding uh, of uh, the concept of uh, ADRC and also uh, what a good understanding of the actual physical properties of the system. And together to come up with a solution. Right? And you come up with a formulation of this. Once you put the, uh, the formulation into this form, then you can use the extreme state observer to, to, uh, to estimate F, control it out, and that's how to get rid of the vibration. <coughs> okay? In this case, we have uh, double loops. One control the phase, one control the amplitude. <coughs> right. So, uh, uh, for the, let me put the, Active disturbance re rejection in a nutshell. What problem are we dealing with? We're dealing with internal and external disturbance. Right. And we call we normally call it disturbance re rejection, but that uh, word becomes a little weak. So we, uh, what we really want to achieve is decoupling. We want to, uh, ideally the disturbance has no impact on out, on the output. That's our goal, and that's uh, the conviction we inherit from Ponsolde from Shibano. And uh, uh, we want to do it in an active way. We don't want to wait, wait, wait until the output deviates. We want to do it as soon as we capture the information, we act on it. So this is more of an active, uh, as opposed to passive disturbance, uh, disturbance rejection. Okay. And, uh, uh, and this is because uh, this is possible because the disturbance information is, all, is, is there all the time. We just didn't know. We found a way to get it. Okay? And uh, uh, the way we get we uh, estimate disturbance is not unique. There are other there are other uh, 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 methods, right? but they're all isolated. They're all for a particular uh, problem. They devise a particular way of doing it. Uh, but what we are saying here is active disturbance rejection is a universal concept. All of that techniques can be bring, can be brought under this one umbrella, yeah. <clears throat> and the method uh, of, of, of uh, the key uh, uh, method is to estimate total effect of, of the disturbance, yeah. and that's where the extended state observer comes in. Yeah. And uh, uh, the solution we uh, provide, the pro uh, we propose, is parameterized. Parameterized uh, ADRC. Now, remember ADRC uh, uh, was a success in 1997, but it was so hard to use. It took uh, my PhD student a couple years. Maybe it worked. Right. Obviously, that's not an industrial solution yet. To go from there to industrial solution, you must make <coughs> it easy to use, easy to tune, simple to implement. That is not something that uh, 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 we in university do very well. It took us uh, uh, six years, from 1997 to 2003, and we found a way to make a uh, uh, transition. And that, uh, that in 2003, it became a technology. It took us in a, in a, uh, another seven years to put it in the factory, because you have a lot of convincing to do. <laughs> So, so, I, so at the end, it started with some papers, okay? and, and then uh, uh, patents. We applied uh, three or four patents. We have a clean state uh, spin-off financed by uh, uh, by uh, U.S. venture partners. Okay? Now we're uh, we're on the verge of a uh, uh, license we might. Uh, we already licensed it to a uh, Texas in, uh, Texas in, in, uh, e instrument. We're on the verge of uh, making a massive industrial adoption. That's where we are. 
in terms of uh, ADRG technology, we're going to say it's, it's uh, uh, can be uh, seen as a, a few lines of code. You know, the industrial uh, control like PLC, there's thousands of lines of code. But crucial to control function is just a few lines of code. And we, we take out PID, we replace it with ADRG. And so coding wise, very simple. No hardware change. And this can be done across platforms, from microcontrollers, or DSP chips, to IPEA, DCS, PLC, you, you, you name it. <clears throat> and we have validated this in the manufacturing environment. There, there are some, some tests we cannot disclose because it's under NDA. But uh, uh, we took a major manufacture, a miniature manufacturing process, and uh, we validated it. And we show people how much money it will save on one machine. <clears throat> and uh, we've done this motion in temperature, in, uh, in web tension, in aerospace, and, and, and in, uh, in, uh, in, in aeronautics. We've done it in uh, jet engine control, power management. And I mentioned the uh, high energy physics. But uh, it's really, uh, uh, we don't see uh, uh, a, uh, uh, a hard bound where this, uh, this control technology cannot be applied. Yeah. It's, it's in everywhere you, uh, you uh, apply control, protocol control, you have this need to be anticipated, to not wait along, uh, to, uh, to, to not wait along, and to act quickly. So in, in conclusion, uh, we have seen a long fascinating story. And this is the idea that has been uh, there all along. We just didn't uh, uh, notice it for many, many years. Okay. We become a sort of single-minded, dominated by single ideas. Okay. But uh, as, as, as we saw in Professor Rigel's work, in uh, uh, Professor Hans' work, there are other ideas. There are other, there are other alternatives. Okay. But maybe uh, it's about time for, for us to look at these alternatives, to look at our foundational ideas to look at the foundation of automatic control, to see where we are, to see where we should be. And uh, 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 this field uh, could use a big idea like this. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, we should recognize uh, the importance of disturbance reduction in all control systems. And that's the reason we believe uh, uh, to have control systems And uh, also, uh, let, let, uh, let me uh, make one last point. Is, uh, uh, in our research, we try to make a difference, not just a point in a paper or, or, or in a discussion. There are too many people do that in academia. Uh, we don't uh, uh, have to be uh, one, uh, you know, just uh, uh, one more group. We, at Cleveland State, we want our research we wanted that for a long time. And uh, uh, we are starting to see the effects after so many years. Okay. Thank you very much. How do you see this uh, in comparison with fuzzy control? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, <clears throat> when I first started at Clinton State, uh, my my first uh, instinct was fuzzy oh, logic because uh, there's so much uncertainty and there's so much heuristics mm -hmm. you know, on the part of uh, control engineers. Why don't why don't we program controller to take advantage of those uh, uh, experiences? Mm -hmm. uh, we have like uh, three four master thesis done in fuzzy logic control, and uh, most of them are implemented in hardware either in our lab or at the factory. Uh, it works very well. It's uh, uh, for one particular system with a student working, and take, taking about a year, uh, we can make system work wonders. Mm -hmm. okay. But at the end of the day, I recognize that it's, it's not going to be a, a massively uh, applicable. Because every system has to be engineered differently. But you, can you, cannot, you cannot easily scale it. But you can, uh, Automatically uh, generate fuzzy control rules 
from the wavelet of the signal. Yes, we studied the, the wavelet foo. Yes. Okay. So we're looking at we're looking for an angle to see uh, how you know, the best way to handle the uncertainty. Yes. And uh, we believe uh, uh, to go off differential equation approach completely to uh, to 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 make the uh, controller rule based. That's a huge jump. That's a huge jump. And, and uh, uh, we already accumulate so much expertise, understanding on the uh, uh, control theoretic uh, 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 side. We're, we're, we're trying to find the best combination of what we learned in the past, right? what the problem presents, what the challenge presents us. And most importantly, the industrial solution. Something has to be simple, something has to be easily tuned, something uh, is very robust, uh, has a very uh, 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 wide range of applications. So fuzzy controller can, can work very well mm -hmm. on some problems, but as a, a general industrial solution, it's going to take a while to get there. I got, but here, as you may know, yeah. I thought you, you, have, you still have to come up with a, very, a model no. to start with. The, uh, uh, Is that I saw not, the not, not, not detailed model. Oh. Yeah, this, this F yes. business. Yes. Uh, if you uh, identify the system using the uh, modeling approach, you find a mathematical expression of it. Yes. Right. And 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 uh, uh, that's the uh, basis of modeling control theory. Is you must have a mathematical expression. Uh, in this approach, we're saying we don't need mathematical expression. We need a signal expression. We need to estimate that signal in real time. Right. That's how we simplify the controller greatly, and and uh, and uh, uh, that's make it the biggest biggest difference. So so you are right. Uh, Fuzzy logic uh, uh, is an alternative, uh, just like ADRC is an alternative to model based <coughs> uh, But there are uh, some limitations that I believe uh, prevent Fuzzy logic. For the logic to be a uh, potential replacement of PA. So, yeah, I was just saying, along those lines, like, command estimation, and I also don't know who um, um, I'm to, I'm saying too much about this here, and I don't know what you but it seems like you fit a parametric, you basically assume a parametric expression, like, you know, a linear plant model, and then you kind of empirically do state estimation and you find you know, like a maximum likelihood fit to the input-output data for that parametric form online and then you base that on your controller and do kind of no feedback linearization based on that active model. And I'm probably butchering a lot of this, but that's what it seemed like. So it's still, you still need some plant model and it needs to be parametric and then you'll basically do an active online estimation of that, assume that that's true and then kind of sense, uh, hope, uh, hope that all the all the parametric variation, if the plant parameters change, you still have kind of enough wiggle room to do kind of active online estimation in that parametric framework for your plant model. And that the strength of this is that you can adapt to changes in your plant model because you're simultaneously estimating the model and the disturbance jointly as just a general disturbance. And, th and then you're fitting into that. So, th so that instead, instead basically, we've, we've, we've gone from fixed model plus disturbance, which is wrong to just you've given us a lot more degrees of freedom to say what we really care about is the output disturbance. But is this a fair interpretation? I'm just asking because <laughs> well, look, the kind of online of, estimation and control mixed in with that. There is a lot of truth in what you said. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but, but the names, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes we get caught in, uh, caught up in the language. Sure. Uh, the parametric model means, to me, mm -hmm. that uh, you already have the mathematical expression. It's just the parameters of yeah. our are not yeah. certain, right? Yeah. In that sense, this method doesn't require that. But then, I mean, F is not just, it's not just a signal. You're, well, I, saw, I saw an equation there where it was in terms of, in terms of variables, and I think that's where our confusion is that yeah. it's, it's not just a non-parametric model for, and or a data-driven model right. for F. My, the, the F could be a nonlinear. Yeah, sure. That could be uncertain. Could actual, be, could, actual, could, could, yeah. could be anything. No, right? no, but then F right. hat is. F hat is a real time estimation of that. Yes. Not the model of it. 
Okay, sorry. Uh, um, estimation. So, but but your real time estimation. I mean, to some degree, like what the real F is is completely irrelevant to this because it's what generates your signal. But what you're basing your control right? actions off of is F hat. The signal. And, yeah, and, and but it's a parameter fit to that in some way. Or we we are not assuming that we know the structure of that. Okay. We, we're not assuming that we know the uh, even any parameters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, I understand. But so, so, so if, uh, if I may, mm -hmm. maybe uh, the model we're using is y double dot equal u. Yeah. That's ideal integral plan. That's a pure, that's a pure, mm -hmm. yeah, pure in, in integral plan. And and we're treating anything, anything else. away from that mm -hmm. as the f okay. estimated tensor dot. It's yeah. actually it doesn't seem completely true because for oscillations you take uh, you seem to take. Um, yeah. Uh, a more detailed model of the plant, you include um, omega squared, right? As x double dot plus omega squared. Uh, well, in the uh, higher energy, of, uh, uh, right? Yeah. Well, in, uh, in actually, uh, you know, that's that, that's a fair question. You, you are saying in that particular application, you already know the structure. You already have the structure. Yeah. So right. you, you take dominant structure. And, uh, normally, you assume that it right. is a bunch of integrators plus this right. plus right. unknown part. Right. But for oscillations, you say it's uh, x double dot plus omega squared x plus uh, right. uh, the right. rest of dynamics. Right. So, so the omega square could, could be unknown. In that, in that case, you you say uh, that's a uh, that's a, a parametric model. But that's not what we did. No. No. We are treating the whole thing as unknown, and we're estimating it in real time. Well, you're estimating omega as well. Not uh, not omega f. No. Uh, the rest of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Understood. So, uh, do we have any other uh, uh, dominant dynamics cases? So it's uh, multiple integrators and uh, and oscillator. Is that it, or do you use uh, some knowledge of dominant dynamics? Uh, well, it, it, that's an excellent question. It, it's uh, sometimes you do know the, uh, the the dynamic structure. You know, but you, you know, part of that is already known. Why why do you uh, 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 not take the take advantage? Of it? Yeah, that can be taken into consideration in the structure of uh, the, the, the state estimator. Mm -hmm. If you know the dynamics, you can put it in. So uh, I don't have time to go over the details of that, but but information like that can be incorporated into the observer so that observer doesn't require such a high bandwidth. Yes. So if you know, if you assume you know nothing, then all of f has to be estimated by the observer. Yes. But if you know part of f. Then observer only need to estimate what's the unknown part. And that will reduce the uh, reducing the bandwidth is holy grail in industry. You want to use a, a lowest bandwidth as possible. And this will uh, 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 solve your noise problem. This will solve your stability problem. But, but this is not over. Uh, this is not emphasized in academia. And, but but uh, 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 but taking advantage of our knowledge of the plant. Help us to reduce the bandwidth of the observer, yeah. and that's a product. In, in one case, in LEMS, we, we apply this uh, in LEMS gyroscope uh, by applying the omega square y uh, and, and, and the damping term. By, by by incorporating that into the observer, we were able to reduce the, uh, uh, the bandwidth by three magnitude. So that worked out very well. So so in uh, so uh, so so at the end. Uh, here, I emphasize uh, in, in a, a brief, uh, 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 brief, brief introduction that this method can be completely independent of knowledge of that. But in actuality, if you know part of that, which yes. is, is, is the case in, in most cases, you can incorporate that into the, uh, uh, the observer and make your controller more efficient. Estimate the rest, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. so, so I think you got the gist. Well, it, it, it just no, sometimes we get a t the terminology yeah. In, uh, in conflict. Yeah. I'll take it offline. I still have some questions about what you mean by state estimation. But <laughs> okay. Take it offline. <laughs> yes. Are, are you familiar with anticipatory computing? The University of Gent does a that work on anticipatory computing. I, I see this as an example of anticipatory computing and anticipatory physics. Does that make any sense? Uh, anticipation is a big word. Yeah. Anticipation is a big word. In control from the very beginning. Yeah. In 1911, when Almas Spurry put together a mechanical PID, mm -hmm. and what's big 
uh, inhibit uh, design is anticipatory be behavior of his controller. Mm -hmm. When Norm Minoski conceptualized that controller, he admitted at the end of his article, he said, my controller, this controller does not anticipate. Correct, because it's a feedback. Right. Yeah. right, so Minoski realized that he was missing something. Yeah. Elmer Spurry yes. did it, but um, couldn't, couldn't come up with mathematical yeah. description of it. Yes, I'm trying to draw your attention to that this is right. uh, the example, a, a solid example that works of right. anticipatory controller and anticipatory computing. There is a theory out there, and it's, uh, there's a lot of body of work, uh, a lot, lots of it in Europe, though, in that field. Thank you. Thank you for pointing out. The, uh, this, the extended state estimate, state observer, mm -hmm. and the estimation process. There's some time series of some suite of state variables right there. Okay. Right. And thinking about that, it sort of reminds me of the way th there's a lot of linearization that gets done by, in effect, pre-distortion or pre-compensation, mm -hmm. where you say, oh, okay, I see what's going on here. My clamp is drifting around. There's my big power amplifier is heating up, or you know something's going on going on to change its transfer function. And there is to some degree a, a machine learning kind of process right. whereby it predicts, okay, that's already started. I know where that's going to go, <laughs> or at least I can guess where it's going to go. So I'm going to modify. I'm going to uh, pre-distort the input a little bit to see what happens, and then now. I begin to form a model of the effect of that pre-distortion mm -hmm. and so on. And although that's usually done in the field of RF, that's the way big uh, cell phone towers manage their, their, their linearity and so on. But the point is, as far as I can tell, it's pretty much you know, uh, homomorphic to what you're doing. It's just a different, different time regime, a different loop bandwidth and, and so on, but it has the same the same character, right? Exactly. Uh, you, you point out a very important fact. Uh, mathematical biologist uh, uh, Robert Rosen said, said this, at the use of intelligence is anticipation. Yes. So you find anticipation everywhere. And sometimes we just didn't recognize the connection among different yeah. fields. So, so, so th that's very true. And also, uh, we, when we talk about <coughs> trying to the function drift, uh, using time theory to correct it, and that's precisely what Professor Guido did, start, starting in 1971. Right. You, know, you, you, you have a train of, a, a train of function of plant, you invert it to control it, but the plant drifts. Uh, so what you do, you use adaptive control, adaptive algorithm to make real-time adjustment. Mm -hmm. So you follow the change. In the, right. yeah. So that, that's another type of intelligence. That, that, that's, it's, it's a, 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 even Professor uh, uh, Winner emphasized in his books uh, separate things about learning, machine learning. You know, you, you, that, that's ideal, that's, that's a goal that we, we've been all uh, seeking. And Professor Han uh, once said that uh, you, the longer your controller runs, the better its performance should be. Mm -hmm. you know, just let's find a way to make it happen. What we present here is a building block. Is a is a is a, a, a fundamental building block, and uh, uh, at least this year's ACC 2013 ACC. This is a uh, June uh, uh, 17th and, and, and to 19th. Uh, there's a pre-conference workshop on June 15th and 16th on ADRC, and we we have uh, uh, invited uh, uh, 12 speakers uh, from around the world to come and discuss with us about what has been done and uh, uh, what needs to be done. So we have an event uh, at ADC this year, you're all welcome to join us, and we're going to discuss the frontier of this technology. We're going to, uh, we're going to discuss where we go from it. And this is a, a very modest beginning, uh, uh, and we, we start to see uh, the benefits, and we start to see industrial scale benefits but there's a lot more to be accomplished, both on the industrial side and on, on the academic side. Thank you.